Hi everyone, welcome back to my grade 9 uh, interactive digital media or and grade 10 interactive digital media uh, tutorial series. I've got a couple of students who are wondering how to add uh, either projectiles or the ability to shoot ammunition, those kind of things to their games. So this one is going to be a little bit of a tutorial on how to add uh, projectiles and ammunition to your game. So this is actually remarkably simple. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go down to our sprites here. We're going to create an ammunition or sort of like a, I think we're going to use like a lightning sprite. So we're going to go to sprites and see lightning. Uh, lightning, or maybe we're going to do uh, fire, flame, no, it looks like lightning is what it's going to be. <laughs> I don't see anything else here that would be a particularly great um, sort of projectile. Well, maybe that sun right there wouldn't be bad. Um, yeah, I can actually use this sun. We're going to delete this lightning. You can use the lightning if you want. But I'm going to rename the sun um, um, energy bullet. just so I know what it is. And um, we're going to resize it a little bit, probably take it down to about size 10. Yeah, that's a good size for visible, but uh, but not too tiny for our bullet here. Okay, so we're going to do a couple of different things here. Um, and we're going to be using something called cloning to create our bullets. And uh, I'm going to show you how that works. So energy bullet, events, when game uh, when game starts or when green flag is clicked, the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to hide this bullet. So we're we're not actually going to ever use this exact um, this exact sprite. We're going to be creating clones of it. So we actually want it to stay hidden uh, to start off. And then I'm going to show you how we create copies of it and use them as bullets in our game. So when game starts, it's going to start. It's going to hide. Next thing we're going to do is go to our rocket. We're going to create a little bit of um, code here for just to control the shooting. So we're going to go events. Um, when game starts, we're going to add the control block. So we're forever checking and an if then statement. So we're going to adjust this later to add an add in ammunition, but for now we're just going to do a sensing and we're going to say uh, key space press. So when key, and we're going to actually leave it as space. Spacebar will be our firing, um, our firing button. We're going to go to events. Now we're going to go control, and we're going to create. Click on this one right here. It says create a clone of myself. We're going to create a control a clone of energy bullet. Okay, so uh, create clone of energy bullet. This is easy enough here. Um, and that's all you got to do for the rocket itself. So when key space pressed, forever uh, create clone of energy bullet. Now we're going to go back to our energy bullet, click on that sprite, and we're going to add in a little bit more um, information. You'll notice right here, it says when I start as a clone. So this is where we actually put the behavior. It's for the cloned version of it. So when I start as a clone, and now we've got to add a bunch of motion blocks to this. So we are going to go to, so when I start as a clone, go to, we're going to drop down the rocket. We're going to Uh, point in, uh, let me just see, point in direction, and now this is a little bit of a tricky part that took me a while to figure out when I was watching tutorials, but we're going to have it point in direction 90, but you'll notice how there's this oval around 90, meaning we can drop other things in there, so I'm going to want you to go to sensing, and believe it or not, and this is kind of confusing, we actually want to do this one right here that says backdrop number of stage, because what we're actually looking for is the something of something. So we're going to grab this one. We're going to 
drop it here, and that's going to update the uh, drop down menu here. So we're going to click down here. We're going to go to um, uh, rocket. So point in direction of rocket, and then we're going to point in. So point in direction, direction of rocket. Now that one is a little tricky. Um, often you can find things kind of nested like that, but this one's an important one. So point in direction of rocket. Um, we're going to move. Now we want it to be moving faster than. Uh, Uh, we want it to be moving a little bit faster than our actual rocket itself. And we want it to uh, appear a little bit in front of our rocket here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say move about 30 steps. We'll see if this works. If not, we'll adjust it. And that's a little bit about what you always do in Scratch. You're always adjusting. Uh, we're still going to move 30 steps. And we're going to change... Uh, we're going to change... Well, let's see, see what it looks like. We're going to add a show now. Uh, show. So, let's update this. Okay, so it is it is pointing sort of directly in front of the rocket. Um, that looks pretty good. Okay, we're going to stop it. So that's good. Move 30 steps. Show. Okay, now we're going to go uh, to um, the control. And we're going to do a repeat until... And we're going to repeat until, and in this case, we actually have, I have three different, um, no, uh, I have two different robot enemies, so I'm going to have to do a couple different statements here, but we're going to go operators, and we're going to add an or, so any number of statements can be true, and you can actually nest or statement, which is kind of neat, so we're going to go repeat until, and go sensing, touching, the edge, or, um, or we're going to be, we're actually going to have to add another or inside this, so, uh, repeat until touching edge, touching robot one, or touching robot two. Okay, so go to the front, show, repeat until one of these three conditions is met. And while it's repeating, it is going to be moving. You actually have to go a little faster than this, about 18 steps. And then after that's done, once it's done those things, you go to our control and we'll say delete this clone. So let's give it a little test. Okay, so that's actually working pretty good. Um, now we have to actually make it kill things, because it's not actually killing stuff yet. It's uh, it hits them and stops, as you can see there, but it uh, but it's not actually killing them. Okay, so we're gonna stop that. So let's go to our robots. Um, Let's add a sensing for them actually dying. So, events, when game starts, forever check, um, sense, uh, if then statement. So, if, if, and we want to say touching energy ball. So, if uh, sensing, touching, uh, energy bullet, and looks, we will go to, uh, Hide. Okay, I'm going to drag this onto my second one as well. Should show up there. Perfect. Let's give that a little try. Okay, Let's see if we can actually kill some of these. I died. <laughs> okay, killed that guy. Awesome. <laughs> Notice my unlimited giant piles of bullets there. So that's a little bit unfair. So obviously we need to... Um, do a little bit of uh, fine-tuning here, which isn't bad. We can do that as well. Um, so let's go back to our rocket. So if key space pressed, create a clone of energy bullet. Let's add... Um, 
a control here and we're going to wait like 0.2 seconds. Let's try that. That's almost a little bit too fast still. I think we're going to go with 0.4 of a second. No, I think point <laughs> fine tuning this really down to the point of something of a second. Okay. Yeah, there has to be a little aiming now if we do this, uh, which is good, right? You want uh, you want a little bit of uh, skill involved in this. Okay. So I'm going to stop it. Now here's one other thing we can do, which is really neat. Um, we can actually create a variable for ammunition. So instead of having unlimited energy bullets, which isn't really fair, we can actually add a variable for that. So um, we're going to go here back to our energy bullet. We're going to go to variables. We're going to make a new one. We're going to call it uh, ammo. Click OK. So uh, game starts. We're going to set the ammo inside the bullet itself. Set ammo to, let's say, 15. Not 125, 15. Okay. Set ammo to 5. Um, when I start as a clone, go to rocket, point in direction. Da, da, da. So right about here, I think we're going to drop in this. So change ammo by negative 1. And let's test this out. So we have ammo 15 up here at the top. And it goes down. And of course, it goes into the negatives. So the next thing we need to do is stop our ammunition from uh, allowing us to shoot. So we're going to stop it. We're going to go back to our rocket. And we're going to just adjust our shooting uh, block here a little bit. So we're going to go to our operators. And we're going to do an and statement. And we're going to add this greater than one. So we're going to go here. So... Um, and we're going to go to our variable. So our variable is ammo. So if our ammo is greater than zero and we're pressing space bar, then create a clone. So let's drop that back in there. Let's try this game over. Now watch this. So one, it's going down, 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 going down, going down, going down. And it stops shooting. I'm still holding space bar, but it will not allow me to shoot anymore because my ammo is... Um, and ammo is greater than zero. So my ammo is now zero, so it's no longer greater than zero, so it will no longer shoot. So that's how you create uh, projectiles and ammunition. Um, now, obviously, you could create ammo pickups in your game, and a good way to do that would be to create like a little ammo sprite, and then just as opposed to points when you pick it up, or along with points, you just have it say change ammo by whatever you want the number of ammo points to be with your item which is a really easy thing to do so you just do when touching change ammo by whatever you want it to be so that's how you do uh, ammo and projectiles and you get a little bit of shooting and add a new element to your game